Hey y'all, Mythic Rare here, and thank you to all my A1 Day 1 subscribers. For anybody new or just passing through, welcome. If you see me more than once today, feel free to uh, hit the subscribe if you like me. Otherwise, uh, just hit the like button if you could, please. That lets me know I'm doing something right as a creator. Uh, so what you see right here is my Drills and Chills diamond painting. It is Death by Techstar. And I specifically asked Jaded... Well, not like specifically, but like I put in my order form that I wanted the background. Well, I put like do two ABs and then Jade decided, yo, I'm going to have you play with a negative space and have like the entire background be ABs. So in case you're wondering, that's what it looks like. Um, here are some stats about this so far. As you can see, we're right in here on the tarot card. Oh, I'm looking at this and I'm just like, man, we are almost, we are like two and a half weeks in. And so we're like almost a third of the way through the actual project. And like, I feel like I got, <laughs> I'm just barely like 30% complete. Anywho, uh, this pen is one of my Donna Bass pens, what's in the four placer is, um, Mermaid Dreams. Yeah, Mermaid Dreams. Here we go. And then, um, the single placer is super sticky, of course. Here is my event tray, um, for Joel's and Chills 2024. I was thinking of getting the Bijou Bliss one with the ghost, but like I've already knocked my other Bijou Bliss tray off my desk twice. Somehow it has managed to impact like like the tray fell and like hit the corner and it spilled drills twice already on this project. So hence why I went for the one with the sliding lid this time around. And then these, you're probably going to see these. These are my Diamond Art Club uh, storage containers. So, uh, yeah. And then, of course, uh, we're not really diamond painting with my, like light that's in my phone stand just because all the ABs, I feel like that is gonna bounce back in everybody's faces. Hence why I also have release paper on this project as well instead of keeping the uh, clear plastic sheet like I usually do. So last we left off, Alex had finally gotten a new car and we were having to deal with uh, Hurricane Barrel and a few other things like his car is really great. Like we're constantly learning new things about it like all the time um some of those bills from said new car have started to hit us so money is tight but it just means that the content's going to be a little bit different um Nothing really up with me. Just been working and stuff. Again, trying to help take care of the new car. The allergy shots I actually had to place on hold because I had yet another sinus infection. And, um, I get to medicate my nasal rinses now, so instead of 
having just the regular salt water now like I have a special capsule that I drop in it and it's basically like the powder form of Nasonex put it in and then you do your thing in the sink with the nasal rinse and it has been helping tremendously if somebody gets prescribed Mometazone I promise you it is worth it like really truly it has helped by leaps and bounds So, with the intro and the recap out of the way, here's what's been going on lately. Um, Alex's uh, string of misfortune had decided to continue. Um, literally just days after he got the car, uh, he was at work. And he was on his break. And you know how we do these days, right? Like, the phone has replaced the toilet paper. Or the phone has replaced the newspaper inside of the, you know, like, the porcelain office. If you would. And um, he didn't drop it on the toilet. Like, thank goodness. Um... He cracked it on the tile in the bathroom. Like, he had a case of Butterfingers and he broke his phone. And his phone is a Red Magic 8S Pro. So, it's, you know, it's, it's one of those um, phones that's, like, not... It's not a flagship. It's not a Samsung or an Apple. It's one of the more exotic phones. Like, well, I'm not even sure if exotic is the word. Um, like, they're mainly, they're more prevalent in Asia kind of phones. But, you know, it's just like, it's an uncommon phone to have here in the U.S. is what I'm trying to say. And he was like, well, I got it so recently, like, shouldn't there be a warranty on there? And I'm just like, yeah, well, you think. And then we basically looked at the warranty, and he's having me look at this because, you know, part of my day job is sending people contracts and things for, like, booking their group trips with us so if anybody knows their way around a contract now and legalese it's gonna be me right so i'm just like looking at this thing and i am just like y'all's warranty basically covers diddly squat like like we were just looking at this and they're like we are not going to it says in there, basically, we're not going to cover this, 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 and this. And I am just like, you know, what they're actually trying to say is we are not going to replace your phone for free unless you essentially just gotten it from the mailbox and you had just placed your order and you're doing an unboxing video of it, and during said unboxing video, it's not working. Like, it just straight up doesn't turn on. And Alex is just like, yikes. He, like, he felt it. He felt like I sank $800 into this phone for absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, I mean, I didn't know that it was going to happen. I thought that he was going to be perfectly fine. You know, like he could, he could do what I did with my Razer keyboard where like with Razer, 
and how my keyboard was misfiring, I basically had to make a video of me doing a typing test and then like showing the keys misfiring on the screen and stuff in order to have them RMA my keyboard. And I thought like, you know, maybe he was going to have to do the same where, where like he'd have, you know, like do like a, take a video with uh, my phone or something and like we show them like visually all what is wrong with the phone and whatever um but no like we went in their instructions and they said like oh send us an some like our support thing an email so we did and then they're just like we're so sorry to hear about your phone uh getting cracked it's like, you will need to ship us the device, and then from there we will assess the damage, and we will bill you for repairs kind of thing. Um, Alex didn't want to be, you know, down and out without a phone. So we decided to trade in his old S10 and get the... S24 Ultra because that was um, the closest thing to the phone that he had with Nubia and his Red Magic. So yeah, like that was nearly double the price <laughs> of what he spent for the first phone and, and I am sitting here thinking, yep, I am never going to go with a unusual phone carrier again. I, like, I do not care what type of specs they are promising. If he wants to, like, try this again, I am going to remind him, like, I am not going to let this go. I'm going to be like, yeah, remember what happened to your Red Magic? Yeah, no, we're, we're not, mm -mm. we're not doing that. So yeah, just like more money, growing wings and flying away. <laughs> Because something that y'all may not even realize too is, um, Whenever you purchase a used car in the state of Oklahoma, they're still going to um, do that. They still want the excise tax for it. So, like, had they not wanted the excise tax, it, you know, it all would have been well and good. But they wanted, ODOT wanted excise tax to be paid on his car. So, that was like $1,200 plus his plates. Oh no, wait, he already had his plate from his previous car. So he didn't have to pay for like new plates necessarily. He had to pay to transfer the plate and the tag. But still though, like, expensive, 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 expensive. Man, this grid is, like, so tight that I, like, every once in a while I have to go in there with uh, my rolling pin and just straight up, like, back and forth, back and forth. Like, very satisfying. It's, like, a tight enough grid to where um, drills are not popping, but you get, like, that really satisfying crunch. Oh, it's time for more super sticky. 
by the way, I am not the only one that does this. I know people say, like, don't use your tweezers for the freaking brass nibs. Like, hello, how, how else are we supposed to get up in there? Because, I mean, really? And even then, the brass nibs are a dime a dozen. Okay, anyways, fishing for those parallel lines. <laughs> ah, here we go. Yay. Pretty much the only thing that could have been worse with his phone situation is if he would have dropped his phone actually into the toilet. And broke the screen at the same time. So yeah, that's pretty much what's been up with him. He's just been working a whole bunch just to like pay everything like down. Like, honestly, things are so tight that I think the last time we even went, like, and gotten fast food and actually paid for fast food was a paycheck and a half ago. <laughs> like, it is straight up been all home cooking, like, either from the grocery store, from the pantry, whatever we have. We're just doing. And I think it's been almost. Well, the last thing that I got was a thing that I just put up on my channel not too long ago. The uh, Dragon Spirit unboxing. Like that one was one where... I am happy to eat ramen for every single night for dinner and jazz up the toppings and whatnot to make it bearable for like an entire week just because I had had that on my wish list for like uh, ever since it came out from Diamond Art Club Black Friday of last year. Like things have just been so ill-timed finance wise that I just haven't had the money when the kit came like back for restock so finally I was just like I don't even care like I just want this so bad and I got talked at quite a bit for it <laughs> So, like, so far, though, um, car stuff, phone stuff aside, like, the last week and a half has just been such a roller coaster for another reason, and that's because, um, oh, yay, we finished the square, I'm not seeing anything that I left behind nope okay i finished the square anywho um this like last week has just been such a roller coaster because of uh hurricane season and so what had happened was um uh, my parents decided to uh, try and book a cruise for their birthday, but um, the prices were kind of high because it was pretty close to Labor Day. So they decided like, oh, well, 
you know, mom, she works... She works for the airline. She can pretty much, as long as she's got the time off in her bank, she can essentially take that whenever. So they decided to cruise the a week after Labor Day when all the flight prices were going to go back down again. And then they wouldn't be as busy. So they book the Carnival Vower outside of where it, like, goes from Louisiana it launches from New Orleans and it's supposed to be five nights on the ship they uh leave at four o'clock in the afternoon or so they spend one day at sea and then they go to or is it two days at sea I think it's two days at sea actually and then they go to Cozumel. And they spend a day in Cozumel. Another day at sea. Spend a day in Progreso, Mexico. And then the last day at sea. And then they're back home. So, you know, like, Flying from Phoenix to New Orleans, they were all good. And, of course, me being the weather nerd, because it can, like, so drastically impact my filming schedule and, like, how my work is going to go. I'm, like, Hawkeyes on the tropics. And there had been this, like stalled piece of energy like southeast of Padre Island like over by Texas and it hadn't done anything and everybody's just been like watching it for like three days five days one week like ten days it hasn't done anything and I'm just figuring, like, okay, whatever. It'll just, it'll just fizzle out. Like, nothing's going to happen. Um, everything is going to be good. My parents are going to, you know, take their cruise. They're going to have a good time. Um, they left me their confirmation number just in case. But I don't think I'm going to, you know, like, need it. Um, so that's usually what happens as they go. They give it to me just in case something goes sideways. Like, I can manage their reservation in it, you know. But, like, two days after they leave, they're, like, out in the middle of the ocean. And I'm seeing the National Hurricane Center um, had upgraded the formation on that piece of energy that had just been meandering out east of Padre Island. And I'm just like, okay, what is going on here? So I'm, you know, looking at my weather people like Mitch West Weather and um, Weatherman Plus, and they're saying that um, there was a trough that was like coming down and it cooled off Oklahoma for like a good few days but it like stalled out near the Texas coast and it combined with that other piece of energy and it started to take on tropical characteristics and it turned into an invest and then eventually Tropical Storm Francine. And we're just like, well, great. We don't necessarily know where it's going to go yet. It's a little bit too early. So then I had to wait almost a day to figure out, like, oh, no. It is going to go through Louisiana. And then I'm, like, looking at my parents' cruise itinerary and everything and and I'm just like they're gonna dock on the 12th of September 
And then I'm just like looking at the storm and I'm like, um, that storm is going to hit the day before. Oh, crud. So then we're just like, I am just constantly like taking screenshots of their boat on cruise mapper which is the flight aware thing but for cruises in case y'all didn't know you can like follow somebody's cruise ship around um so that's kind of what i did is i just like follow their cruise ship around and i know like Mexico and Canada get, like, they'll allow U.S. residents to uh, text and things for free over there, too. So, as I was, like, pulling all this information up and as my parents were uh, coming in to dock in Cozumel... They were saying, oh, like, what's going on with our flight? It says that it could potentially be disrupted. And then I, like, just inundated them with all the things about the tropical storm Francine while they had been out at sea. And then they're just like, like, oh, no, like, what do you think it's going to do? And I was telling them, well, no one's, like, necessarily talked about this yet, but I think that you may have to either spend an extra day at sea or if it's bad enough maybe even go to a different port of even go to a different port uh when you get back i'm like just depending on how strong this thing gets because the gulf is super duper warm depending on how bad it gets I don't know if Port Nola will be able to receive you guys. And, and like, they're just barely, like, halfway through their cruise at this point. Um, like, that's just barely when everybody figured out, like, it could go over New Orleans. And I'm just like, you know, like, just based on all the experience with, you know having worked through hurricane season 2017 and 18, you know, on the phones and all that dealing with this. I'm thinking if you are able to get into port, your flights could potentially get messed up still. Because even if it bombs out over Nashville, the storm is so big that you could still get like depending on how big it actually is. Like, you could still feel effects of it in New Orleans, even though the storm could be, like, over Memphis or something. So, <laughs> I'm just, like, just, you know, enjoy, but keep in mind, things could potentially go a little sideways once you get back. And, <laughs> and yeah, I know, right? As if that, if, as if that wasn't at all concerning. <laughs> So I am just like, I'm, I'm, you know, doing my day job. I'm like trying to make videos and stuff to get ahead of the curve in case like maybe I have to do a little extra overtime because of the storm or whatever. And I am, you know, like constantly like refreshing, like looking at the storm and like looking at the cruise ship and all the things and um we're just like we're looking we're looking we find out finally that the storm is gonna max out at category two it's gonna go over new orleans and stuff like literally the day the boat the day that the carnival of hour is supposed to come back into port and i'm telling my mom all of this over text when they are still able to communicate 
because they're in Progreso, Mexico. And it was like very much no sleep after that because then they had like the day out at sea and I'm taking calls and I'm like, you know, like telling everybody, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything is fine. Meanwhile, like in the back of my head, everything is so not fine. Everything basically feels like it's on fire right now because, um, because yes, like, well, I can be very professional, um, and like tell everybody to keep calm at the end of the day, it is my loved ones. Like it's, it's my parents. I think like anybody in that situation would, would be like very much concerned and stressed. And then I'm just like having to remind myself like the the cruise liner is not going to put people in immediate danger. They know better than to do that. Like you said, they will either stay at sea extra days or they will show up at another port. Like they'll go over to Tampa or something. Um... When it really, really got interesting was the day that the storm hit because um, what Carnival had decided to do was keep the ship out in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. And it basically wasn't moving. Like, it was just kind of like going in circles and stuff, but it pretty much just was not moving. Like, they're staying far away from the storm, and, like, I could not tell what the heck they were going to do. So, finally, I am just, like, I'm, like, even though I knew it was going to get um, changed or canceled, I had to check my parents in and I checked them in for the flight. They got like really good boarding passes. Um, like they were in like the second group out of the general boarding to get on board the plane. Like they, like they were pretty good, but, and I'm just like, Man, this is a shame. But now, like, later I'm going to have to change it. And I'm just, like, looking at the... At the time and everything. And I'm just like, man, this sucks. But we don't know what the storm is going to do. So, I work the rest of my day. The... The storm does what it does. Thank goodness it only topped out at 108 or 105 miles per hour or something like that. But it was like pretty low. And I'm just like, well, okay. You know, like hopefully, because it was a pretty low end storm, hopefully there's going to be low end impacts, which there were. And I do feel sorry and like prayers to anybody who was impacted by that. So I'm watching the news and I'm looking at the storm damage and um, the uh, the whatcha the whatcha called the news um, they were saying that like, there were a whole bunch of trees and everything, like, knocked down. And they weren't talking a whole lot about the port. So I just, like, had to go and, like, look this stuff up. 
it turns out the Port of New Orleans had decided to close on the Wednesday when the storm hit, because of course. That's self-explanatory. And then they decided to be closed part of Thursday to clear storm debris and do the assessment. So for any of y'all who are not like familiar with the geography of the Port of New Orleans, it isn't, it is connected to the ocean and yet it isn't. Uh, the Mississippi River is wide enough to where the cruise ship can go through a part of the river up until like a certain point where they have a bridge and it's not like one of those bridges that like splits in half and lifts upward. I don't think, um, but it gets to a point where there's like this one bridge that goes across, uh, New Orleans and goes over Lake Pontchartrain. Like it goes up to like maybe that far. And the, the actual Delta, like the river Delta that fans off of the Mississippi River, it has like four, five shipping lanes. Of course, Carnival Valor uses the biggest one. It uses the Southwest one. And I'm thinking like, oh, I wonder if maybe they're just, if one of those is blocked, are they just like going to go through the, are they like going to come through like the main one or like the south one? Like I'm all trying to play 5D chess, trying to figure out like, when are they going to let these people in so then I can change their flight? But... It turns out that Carnival had already thought of that and they were gracious enough to give everybody the one day of the cruise no, no gratuity. Because on cruises and all that, like you factor in the gratuity you know, like, I think some you can pay it up front, others you pay it at the end, but you usually don't, like, tip for your services in the way that you do, like, in normal everyday life. Like, you just, you basically pay the gratuity fee and then that is it. Um, so they decided, you know, due to the situation, one extra day of fun and activities, no gratuity. And it's not like, you know, for like safety reasons and whatever it's not like the ship can be like immediately right there like right there at the opening of the Mississippi River as they're like clearing out all the trees or you know whatever else the storm put in there like they had to keep them out in the middle of the water so they had docked well dropped anchor in international waters like, they're close enough where they can, like, see land. Like, they can see the United States, but they're, but they're still, like, out in international water. <laughs> Meaning that cruise ship took in an extra day of casino revenue because, like, at that point, what else are people going to do except, I don't know, maybe, like, use the spa or, like, go in the pool, play mini golf? I don't know. Like... <laughs> I'm sure that casino was busy and they were just straight up making their money back <laughs> through the through the casino, but it wound up being a very profitable extra day at sea. 
for my dad because he was like one of the many who went in the casino and those machines were so fed that he wound up getting a $400 winner on slots. Like very nice. A way to turn a really bad situation into a good situation. And what gets even better is um, because Carnival knew that everybody's travel plans were going to be so upended or loved ones would be worried, things like that, they made internet free for all passengers. Like they just, they unlocked internet for all passengers. So my mom, she was like talking to me, she was changing her flight and everything. And then there was another statement that came out from uh, Port of New Orleans, aka Port Nola. Like I'm, I don't know, I'll just call them Port Nola from now on because easier to say. So Port Nola, they issue out another statement that um, they would be reopening the port on Thursday. So like 12 a.m. Thursday, pretty much. So it, so I'm just like, okay, you know, that was like, that's a bummer that that is late, but at least, you know, like it's only delayed one day. It's not like they're having to, you know, completely go to a different port or anything. And then there's like curfews and stuff too. So I'm just like asking my mom, like, um, how is that going to work? Because if they're going to open it up right away and I can like kind of see on the cruise mapper that you're one of the first ones there aside from like barges or whatever, like how are y'all supposed to like, what are y'all supposed to even do? Because everything's going to be closed and everything is under curfew right now. And they're just like, I don't know. Um, I think we'll just stay on the ship. And that's basically what Carnival did is they let everybody. Well, actually, they didn't let. They like, they said everybody needs to stay on the ship. Uh, 6 a.m. We're going to have customs come through and then... After that, we will start disembarking passengers. So they got to have one more night on the ship and have a good breakfast and everything before my parents had to go to the airport and catch their flight. So that was like extremely, extremely knowledgeable for me. If anybody is deciding to roll the dice during hurricane season and they wonder, like, sh cruise ship versus hurricane, what happens? This is basically what happens. <laughs> like, I knew that, you know, had they had to dock um, somewhere else, the airline would have honored it. And it's not like we would have been you know, having to show out, like, thousands of dollars just to get them back home. Um, the thing that had really stressed me was what if there were no flights? Like, what if it was going to be Hurricane Harvey or Katrina all over again and there were no flights? But thankfully, it did not play out like that. So, like, these last few days after they've been, you know, like, safely back home, I feel like I can finally breathe. And I have just been, at this point, catching up on my sleep because that was so stressful. Let's see. How are we doing on time? Okay. So, actually... 
I need to stop this right here because uh, my timer is going to go off in quite literally a minute. <laughs> Uh, my shift starts in 10, so I gotta wrap it up. I will see you all later, and yeah, bye for now.